In Samplitude, a track can be assigned to record either audio or MIDI. This track is set to record audio. To record MIDI, you just click on the MIDI button so it turns blue and the monitoring for that track is also enabled. You'll notice that when monitoring is enabled, the speaker icon is highlighted also. Also, notice when I click on the MIDI button again, the MIDI panel closes and the audio panel opens. Clicking on In gives you a list of the MIDI inputs. I'm going to leave it set to Fireface 400 MIDI 1. You can also record enable the track from there if you wish, and notice there is a shortcut, Alt plus R as well. There's also a Record Enable button next to the speaker icon. Clicking on Out gives you the list of MIDI outputs if you are using an external MIDI module. Moving your mouse cursor over New Instrument will unfold a list of your virtual instruments. I'm going to begin by playing in some MIDI drums, so I'll go to Tune Track and select Superior Drummer. The instrument software routing will be simple audio and MIDI together on the same track. You can choose to load 16-bit samples, so I'm doing that to speed up the loading process. I'm using the superior sample set and I'm going to use the Sonor preset. Notice that the MIDI out slot has now turned red to show that a VSTi is loaded. It's also showing up in the plugin menu below. It takes a few seconds for the samples to load and in the meantime from the preset list I'll select MIDI GM Extended. This will help the drums map correctly in the Samplitude Drum Editor. Clicking on the cross hides the VSTi. To open it again, just right-click on the red icon in the Track Editor or on the plug-in slot. Left-clicking on either of these will disable it. Pressing the Transport button opens and closes the Transport Control. I am going to change the project tempo to 110 BPM by left clicking on the transport and selecting a preset from the list. You can also double click and type in a new tempo in the text field. I'll change the zoom a bit to improve visibility. I can save that as a zoom preset by right clicking here and selecting save snapshot. So if I happen to change the zoom setting I can easily recall the snapshot by clicking on the button. I'm going to record an 8 bar drum part so I'll draw in a range from bars 1 to 9. This is the grid and marker bar. You may find that whilst drawing in a range on the grid and marker bar that the timeline suddenly changes size. This happens as a result of a feature called Mouse Zoom on Grid, which is enabled by default. It works by allowing you to zoom in or out by moving the mouse up or down. Consequently, sometimes when quickly drawing in a range, you may inadvertently change the zoom level. Like that. This can sometimes catch people out if you're not expecting it. You can disable this behavior by pressing Y and under Mouse, untick Disable Mouse Zoom on Grid. Personally, I prefer to have it turned off. When you mark an area for editing or cycle recording in Samplitude, this is called a range. If you're using Object Mouse Mode, which tends to be the default, the only way to draw in a range would be to do it in the Grid and Marker Bar area. However, when using Universal Mouse Mode, there's no need to aim in that small area to draw in a range. You can do it more comfortably in the upper half of the track. Universal Mouse Mode means you can select a range in the top half of the track and select the objects in the bottom half. It does take some practice though. There's more about Mouse Modes in my tutorial called Mouse Modes. In case I need to do multiple passes, I'm going to change the MIDI record mode from Normal to Overdub on the transport. Also, I'll turn on the loop button. 
I need to set up a click to play against, so you can either go to Tempo and select Metronome Options. I'm going to open it from the transport control, so right click on Click. I want active while record and also a pre count of one bar. There's a volume slider to adjust the level and you can also import your own metronome samples. You can turn on the metronome by clicking on the transport or from the tempo menu. It's a good idea to set up a hotkey if you use the metronome a lot. So now I'm ready to record, so either press R or click on the record button. So I'm playing this on my keyboard. Just a simple four to the bar hi-hat part. That should do. So double click on the object to open the piano roll editor. Clicking on the drum icon switches it to a dedicated drum editor. The hi-hats are now shown as vertical bars based on their velocity. I'm going to change the quantize grid to eighth notes. Press the quantize button and the hats are now quantized to the nearest beat. Double clicking in an empty space between the notes selects them. Control C to copy them. Move the cursor forward by one eighth note. Control V to paste. So now we have an eight to the bar hi-hat part. The new notes are highlighted so I can lower the velocity for those notes. So varying the velocity between the on beat and off beat improves the overall feel of the hats. Now I'm going to play in some kick and snare. I'll change the note lengths to one eighth to make them more visible. Lasso select the kicks and snares and hit the quantize button again. Now select just the snare and using the up and down arrow keys, this means I can audition different snares or any other part of the drum kit if I fancy it. That's back to the original snare. If I go up to Options and enable Play Click Notes, it means I can hear the sound as I adjust the velocity. Disabling that makes them silent. Now I'm going to draw in a two bar range. Left click where it says zoom and select use range as selection. That zooms us into two bars. Now select the snares and change the quantize grid to 64ths. I can now use the hotkey called nudge event left or nudge event right and the notes move based on the quantize grid setting. Holding down alt whilst left clicking lets you move the notes freely. This overrides the quantize grid so I can make very fine adjustments. Alt also works for moving objects in the arrange window as well. Change the Q grid back to eighths and I'll hard quantize the snare again. Left click on zoom and select eight bars to zoom out to see the full drum part again. Now I'm going to name that part, so right click where it says S1 to open the track options and type in the name. Just kit will do and I'll choose a colour for that track as well. At the moment the object is still uncoloured when deselected. You can make the object colour the same as the track by pressing Shift plus Tab to open view options and tick Use Track Colours. 
so in future all objects will be designated the same color as the track. Finally, right click on the object and select MIDI Object Editor and you can type in the name of the object as well.